Okay. In this lecture, we're going to look at BJT devices, or bipolar junction transistors, and the regions of operation. So on the left here, we have an NPN transistor, which is comprised of an N minus collector region, a P base region, and an N plus emitter region. Notice that this is not a symmetric device and that the emitter is doped much, much more heavily than the collector is. And this is going to be the source of the majority carrier. In this case, the majority carrier will be an electron. In the PNP transistor, we have the opposite situation. We have a P plus region, which is our emitter. In this case, the majority carrier is going to be a hole. We have an N region, which will be our base and we have a P minus region that will be the collector. Now we have essentially back-to-back -back PN junctions and we will label these the collector to base junction or CBJ and the emitter to base junction or EBJ. Okay, now, of course, the way that we enable these junctions is to put voltages across them. So we'll draw a couple of voltage sources. The first voltage source is our collector to base voltage source. And the second voltage source is our base to emitter voltage source on the PNP, or sorry, the NPN transistor. On the PNP, we have the opposite. We have a V emitter to base voltage source. and we have a V base to collector voltage source. Now the symbols for these two transistors are drawn right below the, the uh, physical diagram of the transistor. Our uh, NPN transistor uh, has a symbol where the arrow is pointing from the base to the emitter. And that kind of represents the PN uh, uh, junction. So we have a, essentially a diode pointing in that direction, right? And on the PNP transistor, the arrow is pointing from the emitter to the base. As far as regions of operation go, we are going to define these based on forward or reverse biasing of the diode junction, or the emitter to base junction and collector to base junction. We'll use an F for forward bias. And an R for reverse bias. OK, we have four possibilities for these two cases. The first would be that both junctions are reverse biased. The second case would be that both junctions are forward biased. And then we have two cases, one where we have a forward biased emitter to base junction, a reverse biased collector to base junction, and the opposite situation. And these will determine the region of operation. When both junctions are reverse biased, you can think of this as both diodes being biased in the opposite direction. Uh, so they don't conduct current. So this would be the cutoff region, and this is characterized by no current flowing. If we were using the device as a switch, this would be the off state for the switch. If both devices are, uh, if both uh, junctions are forward biased, then we have a case called saturation. And this isn't a very useful case. Uh, this would be some kind of voltage dependent resistance. If the emitter to base junction is forward biased, 
uh, that diode is turned on and the collector to base junction is reverse biased, we have what we call the forward active region. And this is the normal operating mode for the transistor where the transistor is acting as a voltage dependent current source. This is what we would use to make a good amplifier. Okay, so remember the transistor is acting basically as a voltage dependent current source. In the opposite case where we have the emitter to base junction reverse biased and the collector to base junction forward biased, this is called the reverse active region. Now remember, the transistor is not symmetric, so it won't work as well in this mode of operation. It will still be a voltage dependent current source, but it would have much worse uh, performance characteristics. So if we were to use the device in this region, this would make, say, a bad amplifier. Now we're going to focus, for the time being, on a couple of specific cases. Specifically, the most useful cases for us are going to be the cutoff region and the forward active region. And we'll look at those in the next uh, lecture.